Hi there you wonderful people, Dead Eye Boy here, back with another video and this time it's not just a race we're doing, we're talking about something a little bit different. It's about getting faster on Gran Turismo 7 and there's a couple of things I think as a kind of, well, A plus driver, not the quickest, certainly not the slowest, but there's a couple of things I think I can tell you about. I've not seen anybody else really ever mentioned before and hopefully it'll help you get a little bit faster in the same way that it's helped me get a little bit faster because since Gran Turismo 7 came out I definitely feel my pace has improved qualifying times and time trial have been really really consistently up there in the top 100 um, even better this week we're actually top 30 in uh, daily race B at Red Bull Ring so there's definitely some things I've picked up that I believe I can help you with. So stay tuned, we're about to get into it and hopefully it'll help you get faster. Now let's look at the qualifying time that has me at P30 in the world. Now the reason I'm showing you it from cockpit view is because I want you to watch the hands and I want you to watch the acceleration input. Now turn one here, watch what the hands do here, that little correction, it's doesn't look like much, but that was so crucial to this entire lap. Now, if we take it back, let's have another little look at it. Watch the acceleration input whilst the hands are doing that. Just keep your eye on that little acceleration input. It's on full now and never comes off of full. Now, I'm going to pause it there and I'm going to tell you why it doesn't come off of full acceleration, even though the car was losing grip. Because when your car is losing that little bit of grip, the little flick of the wheel, that scrubs off that slide that's about to occur. Now the flick of the wheel, you see the hands doing that, it actually scrubs off the lack of grip and keeps the car pointing forward, it regains the grip and allows you to power out. Now, when I go full on the accelerator, the car back end wants to step out and it wants to go into a slide. Now, without me making those little corrections, that little left and right of the wheel, the car will spin out. It will end up in the wall. So, what I learned from watching the top guys was that the whole premise of smooth in, smooth out, it's not necessarily true because these guys at the top they're living on the edge of grip. They're basically pushing the car to the max. And as soon as they feel that grip being lost, that's when that little flick of the wheel comes in and they work the wheel to actually keep the car going forward without losing speed. Now, a lot of you might do what I used to do. When I used to feel the car losing grip, the first thing I would do would be either put my foot off the throttle, just ease right off it, and then stamp back on it again. Now, that tended to basically just make matters worse because coming off the gas, you might then regain the grip, but then when you flow the accelerator again, your wheels just spin and you just lose the grip again and inevitably spin out. Or the other thing was you'd feel the car losing grip and you would hit the brakes. Again, that's just going to make matters worse and possibly spin you out again. Either way, you're going to lose speed. Even if you regain the grip, you're going to lose that momentum. However, by feeling the car, using the wheel, giving it the left to right, left to right, that will help you keep the car pointing forward without losing that speed. So you can see here coming through this, the two left-handers, a little adjustment there, this one here. Now you're going to see me get the right-hand tires go up onto the kerb. I'm going to lose grip, but you can see the wheel I wasn't just smooth in, smooth out. I was working the wheel really quite hard. You can see that again. You can see here, I'm really working the wheel, but look at the acceleration. I never come off the accelerator. The accelerator is still planted and I lose next to no speed coming out of there. And that helps me come round the right-hander. Again, power out. Make, get ready to make any slight adjustments that you need to. And here we go across the line and it's going to be a 27.534 one of the fastest times in the world now if we look at another one of the top players digit gaming this guy really really quick much quicker than me 
Watch him again here. Red Bull, turn one. See the little adjustment correction to the steering wheel he makes there. We watch that back again. Notice again the acceleration. He's full on the accelerator. As soon as he gets into the corner, full on the accelerator there, making the adjustments, but never comes off that accelerator. And he powers out again. So this is something the top guys are using because they're right on the edge of grip. Now if we watch another one of the really quick guys, Key 25, coming up towards the end of a lap at Red Bull Ring, he's going to have to work the steering wheel really hard to keep this car pointing forward, but keep an eye on that accelerator, he's full on the throttle, he never comes off that throttle, absolutely on it all the way through. Again, this is why these guys are some of the fastest in the world, because they live on the edge of grip. Now another thing that you can do to help make you go faster is make sure you are using a ghost when you're setting your time trial. Now, don't rely on the ghost to the extent where you can't race without it. However, getting a good lap down is crucial to starting near the front. So watch a replay of the top guys, then pick one of them and set a ghost, pre preferably in the same car that you're going to be using. When you're using the ghost though, make sure the settings for the ghost Set it a little bit ahead, offset the ghost, you can see I offset it by two tenths which means it will start two tenths of a second in front of me and then I'll chase that ghost and I'll try to keep it as close to me as possible. If you start that ghost dead level with you, inevitably the ghost is going to go ahead of you, you're losing that time already because you're waiting to see where it is, what it's going to do, so you want to just start them slightly ahead of you so you can focus in on it right from the start of your lap and that will also certainly help you out. Now, these tips and tricks will translate to pad players as well. Now, I'm not going to try and tell a pad player the best way to use a pad because I don't use one. I'm clearly using a wheel. However, these are things that will translate because the car inevitably will react the same. So, however you control your car when you're on the edge of grip, if it's just flicking the thumbstick left to right, then that will help maintain the grip, keep the car going forward whilst fully accelerating. Now, I know that will work because the guy currently in P2 in the global leaderboard is Damien Schaff. Now, he is a pad player, so to think that wheels have an advantage over pads, not quite true. They're both very, very competitive with each other in Gran Turismo 7. It's one of the beauties of the game. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and that you found the information informative, helpful, and maybe you'll get a little bit faster at the game. It might just be the difference between starting P7 and P1, who knows, a couple of tenths is massive in Gran Turismo racing, so yeah. If you liked the video, then hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you've not already subscribed, we're pushing towards the next milestone which would be 6,000 subscribers, so we're a wee bit to go, but it would help me massively if you hit that subscribe button, but yeah. Thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one, goodbye.